one and all, this is Step Ahead with Ernie Rivera. I am your host, Ernie Rivera, and I am here with you today with our very first guest ever, Daniel Ma. Uh, hi, Daniel. Hi, hi. hi. Thank you, Ernie, for having me. It's, it's an honor to be here. It's very awesome to have you here. Um, we, were, we were looking at uh, some, some potential people to be on the show, and I came across your profile, and it turned out we had a few things in common, didn't we? Yes, yes. I was very surprised. Sure. Yeah, we were, um, uh, first, first of all, we were, uh, my former martial arts instructor, Kisu, uh, you had a job with him, yes? Yes, yes. Well, um, we, we have worked together, but even before that, we came from the same martial arts community because he practices the same style that I practice. So um, I practice Chinese martial arts, and in the world of Chinese martial arts, it's a very family-like structure. So I guess you can call him like an uncle of mine as far as martial arts go. That's so cool. Small world we're living in. That makes us like cousins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice to meet you, cousin. Nice to meet you, cousin. Um, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about how you, um, how you started uh, developing your martial arts and how you started developing your, your company, Martial Club, with your friends. Mm, okay, okay. Well, like, like you said, it started off as martial arts. Um, as a child, I was overweight. I was bullied in school. You know, like you've probably heard this before, but uh, I didn't have a lot of confidence or, you know, capability as a kid. Um, but I noticed on the big screen, someone who did, and that was Bruce Lee. And uh, as someone who's of Asian American descent, who faces a lot of bullying in school, Seeing somebody who is able to face the same challenges and rise above that and handle it so competently, that was exactly what I wanted to be. So I, I, I idolized Bruce Lee as a kid. I watched his every movement, tried to absorb that. And I'm pretty sure that's the story of a lot of other uh, Asian Americans today. But I took it a step further by actually seeking out martial arts. Uh, and um, it, it just so happened that my dad stumbled upon a school that taught the same style that he learned as a kid. So they enrolled me and it was really, really tough at first. They wanted me to quit, but I, I stuck with it. And, uh, today I'm, I can say that I'm a martial artist first and foremost before a lot of things. And it was that passion for martial arts that transformed my life and also parlayed into, uh, what's called martial club because, um, in college I met a lot of other martial artists who were very like-minded. And we started working together, filming short films with, uh, you know, with a home digital camera. Yeah. And we kind of de we started to develop a team dynamic and hone our craft. And eventually, we felt like we were producing things that the world needed to see. And that's when we formed Martial Club. So we operate largely as a YouTube channel, but overall as, um, as an action designing martial arts team. That's absolutely, uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I've, I've noticed in... Uh my own life, you know, it's like little things I've learned here and there, whether it be uh, martial arts or like my engineering classes or whatever, it, it seems like they're all kind of coming together to, to kind of like make a path, you know, all of a sudden out of nowhere. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. 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 I, and I think it's, um, I, I don't think that's by any, by in any case, a coincidence because like I practice Kung Fu. And a lot of people think Kung Fu means martial arts or fighting or something like that. But actually, the meaning of the word uh, more literally means what you can achieve through hard work and dedication. It just so happens that in the long history of uh, martial arts and, and Chinese culture, it's taken on a martial connotation. But the truth is Kung Fu can be applied to anything that requires hard work and dedication and the development of skill. So in that sense, I think all of us need to practice Kung Fu, not necessarily martial arts, but we should all find that thing in our lives that we're passionate about and that thing that we can pour ourselves into that produces a new and beautiful thing. And I think that's what makes this world a better place. That's it's definitely my philosophy that. to martial arts. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, it's, it's just funny that you talk about that because Kisu would often talk to me about uh, bitter work, you know? And yes, exactly. Bitter work bears sweet results. And yes. I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty awesome, you know, to um to develop and and you're and you're right. It, it is kind of about self self development, you know, uh, mm -hmm. through through physical means, and it's not so much about you know uh, winning trophies or being the best in the fight, but it's more about testing yourself through practice, through uh, daily development each day. I think. What do you right? Think? Absolutely. 
And, and the reason I preach that is because uh, we live in a time where wars are fought with guns and bullets. You know, martial arts means the war arts. Uh, there was a time when knowing these styles and knowing these techniques was the difference between life and death, between you protecting yourself and your family and your village and whatnot. Nowadays, you know, our warfare has evolved, but I think that the practice of martial arts is still more relevant or is still as relevant and maybe even more so today than it was back then because you're still developing yourself and you're still, um, the way I think of it is we all have a common opponent, right? It's ourselves and it's life. And that's a fight that everybody's in. So even if you don't ever fight in a cage or ever fight on a battlefield, these are fights that you do have to fight. So I think practicing martial arts trains you to do that. That's the bigger struggle. Yeah, and I, I think it's very similar to, let's say, uh, Olympic athletes who, you know, who they train, they test themselves each day uh, through their through their art. But at the same time, it's, it's forming a community, building a community and building bridges uh, to other to other people so that we might in the future uh, avoid war as much as possible, but rather, uh, rather, um, you know, com communicate through our shared art. Right. Absolutely. Uh, the Olympics are a beautiful thing for that very reason. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was listening to, I think, Danny, Danny Bonaducci, funny story. I was listening to him on the, the radio when he was talking about that, how, um, how he was considers uh, Olympians to be heroes in themselves, because through the Olympics, we, uh, we hope to build better uh, ties with other nations and in doing so avoid war. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I like that. The, um, <laughs> I, I like to think that there's a piece of human nature that desires the conflict which is why we watch boxing or MMA or right. we watch movies because there's a part of us that wants to experience that vicariously. Even if we don't want to, you know, uh, get cut open in a battlefield, we do kind of like want to experience conflict. And I like how the Olympics introduces that element, but in a way that builds nations rather than tears them apart. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, I was, uh, I was brought up with this uh, philosophy because I think you're right. We, we do need to like, in a way, we do need to uh, fight. You know, David Goggins, the uh, yeah. the uh, runner, he yeah. uh, he says all the time that uh, the world needs doctors, they need uh, dentists and teachers, but the world also needs savages. And <laughs> and it's not that we have to go out and doing crimes or anything, but we have to be savage in our own heart to take on the world. Um, I w I was brought up with this philosophy that that basically your opponent. Uh, your opponent is not your enemy. Your opponent is your teacher. Uh, you know, you are your own enemy. You have to fight that that ego inside you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with all of that. And uh, David Goggins is an inspiring person. I yeah, take a lot from what he says. Yeah, I love listening to him and Jocko. And uh, and uh, now you, you're going to be one of my podcasters I listen to. <laughs> Hopefully I'll say something worth listening to. No, I love I love you. I love your program, Marshall Club. I started uh, I started watching it. I think the videos are really amazing. Uh, I think oh my god, I saw uh, I saw Tiger the the world's longest uncut fight scene. Oh yeah, that's and, where I worked with Roy. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and that was that was uh, so badass. I just got to say, <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. You know, honestly, like. I would say, because I, I came on to that project through uh, Shane Faison. He, he runs another YouTube channel called Fight Tips, mm -hmm. which is more uh, oriented towards self-defense and more practical applications of martial arts. Um, but it was so interesting that a world's kind of found common ground through that project. Because, um, yeah. you know, he, he's not used to uh, film fighting, which, which differs quite a bit from real fighting. But uh, he brought me on to not only co like choreograph and coordinate but uh, it was a big collaboration between a lot of martial arts personalities on YouTube. So we, he kind of brought us all together and then we worked together to do something pretty monumental. Like, I mean, it's not going to be the highest degree of def difficulty that you'll see in martial arts film, but it is the longest. And that's why that's he has the record. I, th I think so. Yeah. 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 And it, it was quite an undertaking. It was cool. Uh -huh. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show. Step ahead with Ernie Rivera. Thank you so much for being our, our host today. Uh, yes. I hope Absolutely, Ernie. It was my pleasure to be here and share my thoughts. Right on. Have a, have a great day. You too. You too, Ernie. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much to Daniel Ma for being our host today. Thank you so much. Uh, 
martial artist, businessman, philosopher, my new friend. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We had a different kind of episode. Uh, we had the the brand new intro um, for the show. I hope you guys liked it. We had uh, our very first guest ever. So awesome. And um, at this time, guys, I'd just like to ask you if you found this useful, I'd like to ask you to like, subscribe, um, click that notification bell so that you get the new episodes as soon as they come out. I hope you have a great day. Step ahead with Ernie Rivera. I am your host, Ernie Rivera. Take care. Bye.